Hello everyone, we're back with Fate Grand Order with Hay and Kyo. We are in the first half of the Steel Diaries. I'm assuming this is a uh, Shimosa slash Olympus style arc. Makes sense given similarities to Shimosa. Oh, let me scoot for Ah! My, my chair is loud. <laughs> um, I may, depending on uh, my hard drive space at the time, <laughs> Cut this video, well, like splice it together with Joe Diary's second half, for like an extra long, like two hour video, just to uh, like upload stuff quicker. Because you know, obviously I'm way behind. Wait, wait, that was a 999. What the heck? 999, are you told you? Get that out of here. That's disgusting. You, you guys found five yet? I get 8,000 more. And then I'll never use them again. Um, the art works. I have no idea who this arc is about. In you know, obviously, in Shimosa slash Olympus, each arc was centered around a certain antagonist, which is almost definitely the case here, given the Holy Grail War, right? But, like, who could it be? So, two masters are dead. We got Kintoki and Raik uh, no, Tsuna. Raiko's probably one. It's two more masters. Say could be one. I'm gonna turn my volume up a little. As the moon sets, the clouds part, revealing a clear sky beginning to lighten. Very nice. Is it her? There's just something about her stories that really speaks to me. They make me feel like I'm a character in them myself, experiencing life in that palace. But... I can't get behind using them for politics. That's just cruel of Michi. I mean, Lord Michi Naga. Ready should be free to write what they want. I don't think people can really do their best work when it's just for themselves. You know, it only happens when they're trying to live up to the other's hopes for them. And I'm sure it's no different for her, either. I think she's putting everything she's got into writing more stories to make Lord Mishinaga and Lady Soshi happy. But then again, maybe I'm just overthinking it? Uh, Shuten could be the last one. Although, I mean, I'd, I'd view her as more of a uh, outsider. You know, like a wild card. Right? Than a, uh... Participant. There are times when that is true and times when it is not. Stories, huh? Yep, an unfinished story. Who do you think this is? Uh, Hans? Morisaki Caster? <laughs> um, I don't. Kaoru Yuko's journey isn't anywhere close to over. I don't want it to end here and now. I want to make sure she's writing her best story right up till the very end. A story just for her that only she can write. Shakespeare? You need not worry. The act of storytelling is very similar to the act of following one's dreams, finding inspiration in great poetry, and weaving one's own world. She'll see it through to the end. I'm certain of it. Huh, really? You seem awfully well informed. Indeed, I am. My own friends are great poets with similar inclinations. Um, that could be a lot of people, honestly. Hold on. I'm... Okay. Um, so Hans, Shakespeare, the obvious two. Doesn't sound like Mephistopheles. Although, I, he could show up. I think of other casters. City of Kyo, where, monster, where monsters, evil spirits, and Oni run rampant. Of late, such foul creatures have been prowling over the city's main roads. Now something even stranger has been spotted walking Kyo streets at night. A great hulking beast that towers over the average person. So, I do have a guess about something. So, I'm going to say this isn't spoilers, okay? There's the the third Oni servant, there's like a purple, that came out after Hei and Kyo, right? And they're obviously part- Oh, yeah! Adult Ushiwako Mario's in this too, so maybe they're the last master. But, purple Oni person. I think I've read- Okay, they're they're an established character. I think I know. They're either Raiko or Shuten Doji, like bigified. Well, Raiko not so much. <laughs> but if it's Raik, well, it could be either of them, right? Are they like the lesser Grail here, and all of the casters are going to be funneled into them, like you know Ilya style? Well, that's basically how it worked. 
steel monster. Babbage? Did the metallic glint of the beast's body under the moon's pale eyes resemble nothing so much as steel? Truly the beast, with its eerie glowing red eyes, made up for a terrifying sight as it wandered the deserted streets. That's gotta be Babbage. People have killed coward and pure of this beast. We still devour them if given the slightest chance. I'm not really familiar with Charles Babbage. Did he know poets? Even though... No remains of the beast's mules, human or otherwise, were ever found. The end. Except from a diary. Okay. And there you have it. Lately there have been a number of rumors about a steel monster supposedly walking the main roads at night. Steel? Indeed, I am too unsure as to what this means. Those citizens of Kyo has actually seen the creature themselves, yet the rumors continue to spread. Should it prove to be no more than a rumor, then we could cease our horroring. However, these rumors did only begin a few days ago, almost at the same time as... The Imperial Holy Grail- Did we stop saying the whole title? Yes, exactly. Steel, huh? So this thing's gonna use steel to armor its entire body? That's true, that's a heck of a thing. Steel's been used to make weapons since pretty much forever, even back in the Age of Gods with Susano no Mikoto. Even now, they say the sword that was used to kill Oyochi was made of steel. That's a giant snake, right? It's been kept in a shrine somewhere now. That was then, and this is now. Well, you know, a whole lot of things are different nowadays. Never heard of anything like that even as far south as Hakata. Oh, Oyochi is, um, like, is Oyochi Sakamoto Yoma's snake lady? Or is it, um, Chiyome? related it's so one of the two which basically means there's nothing like it at all in japan or china for that matter which is basically the whole world as far as japan is concerned this is probably just a monster with tougher skin than usual and it's not like we're talking about the setsu armor here nice shining oh yeah gudo likes mecha right oh even the golden huge bear what's that Oh, did I say something weird when I was talking to myself? Sorry about that. I didn't realize you were listening. This was right in my mouth, freaking you wanna know what I was talking about. Anyway, just forget you heard that. That was, well, it's one of the Genji's most secret secrets. I'm gonna have a heap of trouble if they find out I let an outsider know about it. So please just forget I said anything. Oh, okay. Great, it's all I needed to hear. Where do you say armor of steel cannot possibly exist? No more. Indeed, even several hundred years from now, in the age of war where when I myself lived, steel armor is an extremely rare sight. Never heard of such a thing being made in Japan. The only sets that existed were imported from foreign lands. I'm guessing Japan just had less access to, like, iron. So it was, you know, used almost exclusively for weapons. Like China? Or like the countries in the South Sea. Countries? The South Sea? Oh! So down to the south, there are actually countries out on the sea? Uh, I suppose that is technically what my phrasing suggests, but it's not generally what is meant, no. Actually talking about foreign lands from much farther away. Western lands, to be exact. Probably wouldn't help to say they're on the other side of the globe, huh? Question mark? Nope, I don't get it. Wherever these places are, it's not even Hakata trades with them. Anyway, make sure you chew your rice thoroughly, horsey. You ain't touched your food in a while now. And ain't no way to show your appreciation to Lady Karuko's servants for going out of their way to make your rice for our breakfast. Now go on, eat up. Make sure you savor every bite. Nom 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 nom. That's more like it. Alright, horse, I got something to tell you. You just keep on eating while I do the talking, okay? We'll talk about what we're going to do about the Imperial Holy Grail War. To be honest, I don't know what I should do. I got the marks on my aunt, but I never got a heroic spirit on my own. After a few long days of waiting, that you might be my servant, but then you said you're not. Instead, you're a master who's got nothing to do with the Imperial Holy Grail Ward. What if his servant is his mech, the Golden Bear? Anyway, putting all that aside, hearing everything your friends at Kelte had to say, can't help but think this Imperial Holy Grail Ward thing doesn't pass the smell test. In fact, it reeks to high heaven of outright villainy. This limbo guy, yeah? I always thought this ritual sounded pretty weird, but now I know it's this evil guy part of my French just crazy scheme. A lot of things make sense. Your friend said to stop the ritual. Right? Not while chewing. 
think that's the right idea. There's no point in warriors who were sworn to protect the country competing with each other like this. Well, I guess the Imperial Palace just said it otherwise, but who cares? They're morons. Anyway, there you go. And about a dance to some evil guy's tune. Lord Kentoki. Whoa there, don't go falling for me now, you hear? I'm already in love. <laughs> so you have a great sense of humor as well, Lord Kentoki. As I am a puppet rather than a human being, I can assure you there's no need to worry about that. Oh, shut up, Donzo. Got it. Question mark? Did Lord Kentoki just avert his eyes for me a bit? <laughs> Lord Kentoki? Yeah. Is there something I'm lacking? If there is, please say so. Heroic spirits are supposed to be someone in their prime, but I'm afraid I'm still deeply flawed. Regrettably, it seems that even in my prime, my various functions are plagued by many defects. I've thought about it a great deal, but the fact remains that my functions are still imperfect. If I've done anything to offend you, I'd ask that you please let me know. Right, got it. Is it the lack of pants? Now, uh, do you think you can maybe... Munch, munch, swallow. You don't want to do a spit take. Kind of in his personal space. Kentucky started at that innocent age. I see. Question mark? Don't get me wrong, I think it's great how your outfit's built for mobility. But when you get too close, it's a little hard to uh, know where to look. Catch my drift? See. Is that how it is? That's how it is. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind giving me some space, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, hey. You're all done eating, horsey. Alright, then. That, that seems like a good time to tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to stop this Imperial Holy Grail War and whatever this limbo guy's up to. I want you to think of me as one of your trusted companions, just like the rest of your team. Thanks, Kentucky. Right on. I too, I'm glad to have you on our team. Alright, next we want to figure out how it is we're going to do that yet, yeah, right? I'm thinking the fastest way to do it is to take down that limbo scumbag since he's behind it all. Yeah, just go straight to him. You don't know where he is, do you? I'm afraid not. We do think he must be somewhere here in Hang and Kill, but even that is no more than a hunch. So is the actual name of the city Hang and Kill? I know that wrong with the hunches. My experience is they're, they're right more often than not. So it's not like we don't have any clues at all to go on, right? What do you say this Limbo's guy's other name was? Ashia Dolman. That's it. Lord Ashia Dolman. The Omnio Omnio Dragon and the whole Omnio Boreal and Lord Sen Seimei's absence. He's about as high up as high ups, higher ups come. Rumor has it that the Minister of the Left's keener to listen to him than Lord Seimei now. Donzo, got a question for you. Yes? What do you recognize this guy if you saw him? Yes, I would. The Mon. Oh! Da! The Mon Her History. Shimosa! You know, she. Nimble, like. Controlled her. Like, reprogrammed her. So I'm certain I could tell at a glance whether this Ashia Dolman is the original living one from this time or limbo. We have our first objective. It just takes me a bit to get back into it, okay? Heck yeah! Alright, next thought. Just back in the middle of the Imperial Holy Grail War, yeah? This is this crazy huge ritual that requires every only OG in the Boreal working to pull it off. All these folks are going to have to hunker down in the safest part of the city. So I'm thinking if Lord Dolman's going to be anywhere, it'll be the Imperial Palace. Back when I was gathering information, took a look at the Imperial Palace at the end of Suzaku Avenue. Even though it's being rebuilt after a fire burned parts of it down, it has a strong temple level bounded field, better than top rank mage workshops. In fact, it could well even be stronger than that, just not knowledgeable enough to see it. Thinking him's out of the question. Yes, I believe so. Only way we're getting in there is through the front door. The dang good reason. Huh? Hello. Good morning, everyone. I see you've all polished off your breakfasts. Um, would you care for another serving of rice? Wouldn't take any time at all to prepare. Heck yeah! Thanks, lady. Kao Yoko. Uh, uh, sorry. Are you steering when speak at such a volume? So then, you, you like seconds, yes? Very much so, from the sound of it. Very well, coming right up. Servants will be thrilled to know you enjoy their cooking so much. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, seconds would be great, thanks. While you're at it, we got another favor to ask you too, Lady Kaoruko. Oh yes, by all means. Anything for honored guests. Hey, Lady, you're all free to stay as long as you like. 
If you have any special requests, I'll gladly do whatever I can to grant them. Dear the daughter of Lord Fujiwara, no Tomitoki would hear us out. Proper nobles really know your manners. I hate to take advantage of that generous nature of yours, but it's for the greater good. Lady Kaoruko, we do have a request to make of you. A big one! Uh... So what? what is this big request? Get us into the capital or the Oro or whatever? Lord Kintoki, what do you think he made making Lady Kaoruko cower in fear not only once but twice? Not like I was trying to scare her. Sorry about that, Lady Kaoruko. See, the truth is. You wish to visit the Imperial Palace? I see. Hmm. While I'm sure you already know this is a warrior of the Genji, I I must remind you that the Imperial Palace is home to his Im Imperial Highness, the Emperor. Only the highest ranked officials may enter, only for the purpose of discussing political decisions that affect all of Japan. The only exceptions are those who serve the Emperor, or Empress personally, such as myself, but I'm one of Lady Soshi's ladies-in-waiting. One cannot simply walk in as they like. Of course you know that when you made that request, didn't you? Please, I'm begging you here. Oh, my Lord Kentucky, is he doing the, uh, the thing where they bow, but, like, on the ground? What, what's it called? Please stop that. It's not only for you to bury your face in the floor. Oh, Dokaza! I've never seen a warrior of Lord Kentucky's caliber lower himself like this. Please, we need your help. Promise we won't make any trouble for you. Well, I mean, not more than we're making now. As long as it doesn't get back to the main Genji house, you can even use my name if you want. We just want to talk to Lord Ashi in the palace. So please, Karuka, help us out. Lord Kentucky. <laughs> I will. There may be a way. If I use your name when I ask Lord Mi Michinaga, he may be willing to let you in. Tell him. I already owe Lord Michinaga many favors, and I'm a little reluctant to be deeper in his debt. I don't want to ask you to do anything you're not comfortable with, Lady Kaoruko. If you can't help us, that's okay. We'll just lay low here until we can come up with something else. <laughs> we'll squat in your house, and we won't leave until you get us in. Because we'll be making trouble for you either way, but... Yes, that's true, isn't it? <laughs> I should admit it. Alright, I understand. I understand very well now. At this point, only, only Lord Michinaga a few favors won't change anything, so I'll figure something out. Okay. Hmm? Hang on. I'm hearing things, right? Kaoruko just said she'd figure something out, yeah? She sure did. It's a little uncertain of what to do since it was a big request, but I'm not uncertain anymore. That's all. If I'll get him out of the house, anything will do. So while I'm uncertain how helpful I can be, I'll do my best. Awesome. Thanks, Kaoruko. Thank you, Lady Kaoruko. We're in your debt. Thank you, Murasaki. I'm done saying that. You're welcome. At any rate, I'll do everything in my power to get you inside the palace, but I'm still not certain Lord Michinaga will allow it. So if I'm not able to make that happen, I hope you can forgive me. Oh, I don't know. You've got a pretty good shot. You're not just any lady in waiting after all. You're the Murasaki Shikibu. I'm sure, sure the Minister of the Left remembers who you are. I mean, from what I've heard, everyone in the whole palace treats your stories. Uh, we'll still be in the middle of writing the tale of Genji, huh? Yes, that's right. Oh, was it published, like, episodically? She wrote a page down and just passed it around. <laughs> Gasp of realization! Don't tell me you've read it, haven't you? Nope. No, 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 wait. Love to know what you think. I mean, I'd really love to know what you think. What? If you say anything I'm not ready to hear, I, I don't know what all. Never mind that. You need permission to enter the palace, right? <laughs> she... She rebooted. Then leave it to me. I'll um, do the very best I can to get you in. Um, seems that authors have um, various difficulties of their own. Sure, it looks that way. Can't even imagine what it's like for him. Of course, it's my first time seeing a storytelling genius. Writing stories is basically looking at our entire lives unfolding in completely different places and describing them all in one word at a time. Yeah, that's a whole different um. Story from just recording some noble's accomplishments or rumors about some warrior. It ain't at all like keeping a diary either. 
Then goes Kyoko, who said writers pick and choose whatever they like from real events, rumors, journals, dreams, and so on. Then they weave all those different elements together in a single story. So you start with just words. When you're done, you get a vision of a whole other world different from the one we live in. Man. But both of you writing things like that has got to be a ton of fun. Yeah, we still have a battle coming up, don't we? <laughs> Isn't this like five arrows? This is going to be a long one. Thank you for waiting. Lord Mitri Naga has agreed to grant you entry to the palace tomorrow morning, though only briefly. Now come, we must leave right away. That's great, Kaoruko. Thanks a ton. Come on, horsey. No, you're sleeping. It's time to get going, is it not? Oh, is it like early morning? I'm okay. Here, master. Brother, damn, damn towel. Perhaps I'll help you wake up. Wake face. Feeling more awake now? No, it's been a while since we had dinner. You must be pretty tired. We all just have to suck it up. Anyway, I gotta say, I was pretty sm uh, smart of you to get us in right around daybreak, Kawiko. Sorry it took so long for my messengers to obtain the necessary permissions. So if we take a carriage right now, we should arrive at the palace shortly before the gates open. I didn't know the palace opened up so early. Oh well, this is actually a special exception. Since this is a matter that needs to be kept quiet from the main Genji house, the Minister of the Left thought you should come when you were unlikely to see any palace outsiders. <laughs> nice thinking, Lady Kaoruko. Of course, I expect we'll still have some little around to do once we get there. But hey, that means we ought to get to see Lord Dolman first thing in the morning, right? Yes, that's true. You hear that, horsey? Great, let's get going. Great, master. I think we're gonna run into some skeleton ghosts. I thought we'd get a ride in the carriage. Do they have horses, or is like someone pulling it? <laughs> um, I don't actually. Japan must have had horses, right? They're in Sekiro. <laughs> Where are your horses native to? Like, obviously they had a bunch of them in Europe. So should I assume like Europe and Asia? So they must have had some in Japan. Is this normal? No, not at all. Typically characters are only for nobility. Normally it'd be unthinkable for a shinobi like myself to even set foot in one. Oh, this is so exciting. I cannot believe I got to ride in a carriage not once, but twice. Ah. Something wrong? Skeleton ghosts! Oh no, it's just... Well... Master, I'm detecting vicious magical energy signals outside of the carriage. There are monsters afoot. Don't worry, Lord Seimei's spell should keep them away from us. We'll just have to go around them, that's all. Too much trouble. Come on, boss. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's in a little Ashikara Sumo. Wake you up. Lady Kaoruko, you and your servants can just sit back and enjoy the show, too. Moo? Let's do it! Did you hear the moo? Great. Hostiles confirmed. Moving to eradicate now, Master. Okay. That was a long first arrow. You think there's just gonna be like four filler fights and then we get to go talk to Ashiga Dolman? There's no way we see him this early, right? Maybe, actually, who knows? Like, okay, so Steel Diaries is obviously referring to Babbage and who is Steel and Sei Shonagan, who's Diary, because I, I think her, her book's name was Pillow Diary or something of that nature. Which is, is kind of like, to my understanding, it was like kind of a comedy ish? Like, it was just a weird book. That was written weirdly. You know, back in the day when they had like two books. You know, The Tale of Genji and uh, The Tale of Genji 2, Electric Boogaloo. This third book came out and they're like, whoa, that's wacky. I have no idea how accurate that is. But Tale of Genji is considered to be like the first book, right? Wait. First fiction book? It's the first something book. Depending on how you define that. 
Because you could count, like, for example, the Epic of Gilgamesh. It's the first, but that's like the first written story, I guess? I, I don't know. The Tale of Genji is significant for something. <laughs> it's the first book called Tale of Genji. <laughs> Do that. Is it, does this give MP damage up? I forget. Crit stars, right? I knew it had a secondary effect, but okay. So I'm assuming Say then is a master. I mean, the opening scene made that pretty clear, right? So we have two dead: Say, Kentoki, Tuna. Uh, Raiko, probably. And maybe shoot him? Could be Morisaki, too, because, you know, she has screen time. Oh, I think it's more likely she, show, she shows up as a caster. Or maybe the one we're talking to even is a caster. <laughs> and the, obviously then there's a... Um, Ushiwaka Mario adult. But... Well, no, they, they're not alive in this time period. Because Ushi is Raiko's grandchild, right? If I know my Japanese correctly. I know they're their, their ancestor. Like, well, Ushi Raiko is Ushi Wakamaru's ancestor. I guess we bring Morimasa here? Good chance to show him off. Oh! Okay, we, we really are just doing a couple waves of enemies. Gotta keep us busy, I guess. So, okay, we've done that. Now let's have fun guess the servants. So we know Medea Lily. We know Babbage. We only have to guess five, because two are dead. Um, Tamamo's pretty likely to show up, I'd say. Um... Are there any other... I don't think they're gonna bring like in like uh, Miyu or you know Prisma Ilya or like Caster Shooting. It's th those are kind of a. Uh... I like to believe they're joke servants, but then they show up in serious context, and I'm confused. <laughs> right? Um... It's probably not them. This could be a fake out, and this could be, well, not Babbage. You know, it could be like Shakespeare Hans based on what they said, but maybe not. Maybe though. Mephistopheles least seems like he would fit in with Ashia. I didn't realize this. Um, Hanky had like its own battle theme. You can tell by the flutes. Those are Japanese flutes. I don't really pay attention to that. Do, does every singularity have its own battle thing? Like sometimes the music really stands out and has its own personality. And sometimes it, it does kind of blend in a little, right? And then sometimes it's light and darkness and you go da 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 That's how light and darkness starts, right? The, the song from Fate Stay Night, if <laughs> you don't know. But anytime they reuse Fate Stay Night music, it's, as the cool kids say, Kino. I'm amazed. We made it to the palace without having to take a single detour. That's truly an impressive performance. Still can't believe you defeated all those monsters so easily. It's daylight now. That's a weight off all our shoulders. Oh, man. Now I'm feeling sleepy. <laughs> How silly. We're not the ones saying fighting would wake us all up. The sort of thing common around here. Yes, um, we do tend to see a lot of monsters in the middle of the night, or right before dawn. Yeah, those things really are preferred darkness. I almost never show those their faces when the sun's out. Only thing you gotta worry about during the daytime is Oni. Truly really does sound nightmarish. No idea Hankyo is such a dangerous place. Be that as it may, Kyo is still the most prosperous city in all of Japan. Indeed, I dare say it would be impossible for any other town to suppress its scale. Even though the town of Hak. Akata Otsu, which serves as Japan's key port of trade with China, is still far cry from Kyo's size. 
Yet despite that, still gotta deal with monsters. Bang, what are you gonna do? Hankyo wouldn't be one of this today if it hadn't been for the great Sei Taishogun. Saka Noe no Tamo Mario. Okay, so they did have shoguns back then. Well, Tai shoguns. I wasn't for sure if that was a thing that only started after um, like the Sengoku era or not. And all the other warriors who fought and died to claim victory here. And of course, when you got winners, you got losers. So what happens to the losers? Maybe they all die off. Maybe they head out to the fields and mountains and spend the rest of their lives nursing a real bad grudge and the last for generations. But like that, they probably come back to haunt the people they see as responsible for their fate. It wouldn't be any surprise if their grudge caused them to turn into Oni or Such Suchigumo while they were still alive. That sounds like a really bad grudge. Lord Kentucky. Just kidding. But everyone that lost a war really did turn into monsters. Society, as we know, it would have been wiped out long ago. So no, I don't think that's where all Oni and Suchi Umo come from. Just some of them. Wonder which side Utak... So I feel like that rant was important. Oh, that, that probably plays in um, Ushi's character, right? Well, U adult Ushi in quotation marks. Then there's his wife, Lady Suzuka Go- Oh, what? Lady Suzuka Gozen. Some people say she was an Oni herself. Maybe the daughter of the Demon King, but who knows. Maybe she was just a really tough warrior from a powerful family. One without any horns or flame breath or anything. Is she, wait, is she alive in this era or is she long dead? I thought we'll ever know now. Okay, she's dead. She's showing up though. That's, that's a Shekhov's gun. Anyways. Some of the losers who nursed a hell of a grudge gave themselves over to darkness. Even now, they threaten Kyo during the night time. You got it. Here we are, everyone. We're wrapped right at the Imperial Palace. Any of you'll excuse me. Oh, goodbye. Huh? Lady Zanzo is just here. I don't see her anywhere, though. She's still in the carriage? That's, she's not. That's strange. Um, I think the less said here, the better. I would have sworn I saw her there. I even thought I heard her voice. Are you sure? Suppose I suppose it must have been my imagination. Double suppose, I suppose. Perhaps it's because I didn't sleep last night. Well, that certainly won't do now. I need to be clear headed and do it on my best behavior here. And not just me, that goes for all of you, too. Remember, the palace does not tolerate any rudeness whatsoever. So please make sure you take extra care with how you speak and conduct yourselves. We're, we're all looking at you, Kentucky. <laughs> Is that clear? Um, understood. Got it. No, wait, I mean... <clears throat> I'm aware, Lady Kaoyuko. Rest assured I... Equerry? Sakata Kentucky of the Genji clan. It matters well in hand. Please be sure that you do. One transgression will see us all lose our heads, myself included. Alright, let us be on our way. Lord Ashiya Dolman, the current head on the OG. I've indeed heard rumors that he is somewhere inside the Imperial Palace. He would not usually be here this early. But apparently he's in the middle of performing a crucial ritual with the rest of the Omyo Burial. So he is at the palace day and night for the time being. I do not, however, know exactly where to find him within the palace. All I can do is show you around while no one else is around. Whatever you do, please make absolutely sure you do not go anywhere the Emperor Lady Soshi may be. Understood. UNDERSTOOD! Good. Please continue this way. The Lady Soshi's father, Lord Michinaga, has taken up residence in the palace. You should not have to worry about running into him at this time of day. So please do not worry about that. Got it. Well oh, there. Hold up, Lady Kawuko. Someone headed this way. Oh, hold on. I got a text message. Okay. Whoever it is, they've got a real glamorous air about them. Be a lady in waiting or... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hello there. I was surprised to see others up and about this hour. You're one of Lady Shoshu's ladies in waiting, aren't you? Morisaki something, wasn't it? Good morning, Lady Takako. 
My name is Fujiwara no Garuko, also known as Murasaki Shikibu. I mean, I didn't say she'd show up. Is she, like, disguised as, like, a concubine or something? Not a fox? If I understand Tamamo's story right. That's it, Morisaki Shikibu. Been reading your stories for a long time now. Is this Tamamo? Yes? I'm sorry, but who might you be? Alright, where are my manners? Sakata Kentoki of the Genji family. Come to see Lord Doman about an important matter. Not very polite of you. Suppose this must be your first time seeing me in this form? Huh? You mean you don't remember? I mean, now think back when you first came down from that mountain in Sagami. Oh, but then again, you're so young that maybe you couldn't tell your foxes from your tanuki back then. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. Not at all. Is there a story of Kintoki meeting Tamamo? Or like Amaterasu or something? We do appreciate everything you do for the city of Kyo, Lord Sakata Kintoki. As for the, um, young man with the dark hair. But not but notice you seem rather transfixed with me. Have we met somewhere before? Okay, but I'm afraid I can't remember. I'm Takako, one of the Emperor's concubines. Okay, she is. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. That face, those ears, those tails! Don't be polite, be rude! I'm sorry? What is it, horsey? Can, can the other people see the tails? Can't get your tongue or something? No, I gotcha, I wasn't a cat. It's the pretty noble lady. Haha, <laughs> sorry about that, Lady Takako. But we can forgive my young friend here. <laughs> I see. Yes, that's quite alright. You certainly are a straightforward one, aren't you? You there. You can see, can't you? How strange. My illusions are perfect. No one but Lord Seimei should be able to see my tails, or the ears atop my head. Okay. No matter how gifted you may be, this should be entirely impossible. And yet, you saw through my illusion like it was nothing. Are you sure we haven't met somewhere before? If you and I already have a connection of some kind, that would be a different story. Um... This is really hard to explain. Oh my, I see. Then we do have a connection of sorts. Still, it seems you aren't from here for me. So you truly are here to see Lord Doman? Well then, that's, that's quite alright. Happy to keep my nose out of your affairs. So I do hope you'll return the favor and keep my little secret. Do we have an understanding? Uh-huh. <laughs> Good. The dude take care of all your shoes about to kill us, wasn't she? For I'm told only inventual spirits have taken to prowling even within the palace walls of late. That's totally a threat. Phew. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it that made my blood run cold. Me, Kaido Mario of Ashigara. Guess this means she's more fearsome than the giant bears of Ashigara? Man, this stuff's exactly why I don't understand woman. Are you alright, Lord Horsey? I like you were discussing something very private. Never exchanged more than a few pleasantries with Lady Takako myself. Um, I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about either, but... Excuse me, please, Ashia Doman. Exclamation point. Uh-huh, and it says this approach. I'd like to get behind Horsey without me noticing. Oh, yeah. Hello. I do beg your pardon. Could I have a moment of your time, young man? Couldn't help but notice that many impurities circling about, about your head. They may have something to do with your unusual manner of dress, but no matter. Please remain still. Oh, he healed us, thanks. Exercise in evil spirits, huh? They did it so easily, that I even needed to light any sacred fire. Pretty clear why they say you're one of the best Omyoji you've had in ages. There we go, that should do it. Do we think this is the real one, or is this like a, uh, a clone? Or like, well, like a stand-in. Have you run into any creatures of the night lately? Well, that won't do it all. Maybe they brought the impurities with you into the palace. That's alright. Now that I've exercised them, we have nothing to worry about. Ashia. Doman. Yes, that is me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so terribly sorry. I've been unfortunate enough to study under Lord Seimei. I know I did some residual anger from the monstrosities that roamed Kyo at night was still clinging to you. I do hope you can forgive me, Lord Horsey. Then you mean you just help me? It's good to see you again, Lady Kaoyuko. I mean, Lady Murasaki Shikibu. And you, Lord Sakata Kintoki. As for you, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. 
Hey, my name is Ashia Doman. I'm but a humble Omiyoji. With the great Lord Abe no Seimei absent, I, along with all capable Omiyoji at the Omiyoji Bureau, but attempting to fill his shoes. As it is my task to protect the Imperial, pa Imperial Palace, albeit in a manner wholly separate from our valiant warriors. As duty bound to do something about the Imperials that's not clinging to you, however minor. I'm horsey. Da da da. Goodness me! Seems you're not overly fond of me. Perhaps I shouldn't have been so hasty in stepping in to exercise you. I'm afraid I don't understand why it is you're so wary of me. But it's quite alright. But I'll humble on me, OG, after all. I'm well aware that Lord Abe no Seme has a love of the people in a way I never will. Indeed, the public seems to view me as something of a villain. So do not worry, I'm accustomed to such dislike. Not about public opinion. Oh? They may ask how you already know about me. Surely you can't have heard anything from the missing Lord Same, eh? Donzo! Been doing my best to let him blab on without cutting him off, but I can't wait anymore. Is this the guy you guys are telling me about? Is this our limbo guy right here? Right. Master, Lord Kentucky, forgive me for remaining hidden while I speak. This man here doesn't need to look exactly like Limbo. However, not since any of Limbo's unmistakable malice from him. No, 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 he erased his own memories. Just kill him now and we'll end the whole singularity. Trust me. In fact, I sense nothing evil about him at all. It's almost as if the very type of magical energy he uses is completely different from Limbo. Huh, is that so? Let's get in Limbo. Must be different people. This is great, Donzo. Just knowing that's a big help. Lord Kentucky? Do I perhaps have something on my face? Nah, you don't. We just wanted to see you check up on something, and we have. We're all good now. My friend there can't seem to stop shuddering, well, probably because we've never met an Omiyoji before. Can't blame him, really, since he's from real far away. Oh, I see. Do you mean like Sagami or somewhere thereabouts? Something like that. What's all this commotion? Imperial Noble! Uh, oh, this guy. Where do you think you are, Doman? Have you forgotten where you stand in the Emperor's Palace? Lord Michinaga. Oh, that's Michinaga. Okay. Oh, Kaoyoko, it's you. Hmm. And you're Kaido Mario of the Genji clan. Hmm. I don't recognize you. Who are you? Get the block? Okay. Is that the second aerial? I think there's five, right? Yeah, that makes sense for Alice to be. Oh, well, actually, wouldn't it make more sense for it to be like in the middle? Like, couldn't it, like if you had like an army, you could just like go straight for the palace, couldn't you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Japanese logistics. Get that quartz. You know, do what? One. Okay, there's one more just complete quest, and then there's one complete hay and kill. The palace played host to unusual guests today. The palace is the highest political institution in all of Japan, where the emperor himself resides. Not even warriors of the acclaimed Genji clan, or those who serve Lord Michinaga himself, could easily gain entry. And yet, in spite of all that, this young warrior and his companion said they wished to visit. Their reason. To meet with Lord Ashia Doman, the Omiyoji currently serving in Lord Abe no Seimei's stead. Along with this man, who has always seemed vaguely unsettling to me, despite his soft demeanor. Fortunately, the young warriors were successful. Their business out now concluded, that they would turn around and leave right away. Is this Murasaki? But as luck would have it, there is then none other than Lord Michinaga, the Minister of the Left and the Emperor's father-in-law, should appear. I was so shocked that I feared my heart might just leap out of my mouth. The end. Excerpt from a diary. This is either Morisaki or Shonagan, or Sei. Because Sei wouldn't be here, would she? Glad to see you in good health. Health, not health. 
Lord Minister of the Left. This young man here is my apprentice, but he'll one day be the equal to even the four heavenly kings. Responsible for bringing him here, so I beg you, please be lenient with him. Lord Mishinaga? These are the two visitors I told you about the other... Silence, Kaoyuko. Speaking with Kaido Mario right now. Yes, Lord Mishinaga. Forgive me. Now, you there, boy. Let me take a look at you. Meet his gaze. Oh. How oh, odd. Since you are truly unafraid, even in the presence of the Minister of the Left. I see. So you're one of the Genji's up-and-coming warriors? Kaido Mario never mentioned that. Yet shown the slightest sign of fear, declared you an interloper and knocked your head off where you stand. And heh, <laughs> seems you're made of stern stuff indeed. Have you perhaps encountered a great malicious spirit here before? Oh, not here, but just before. Yeah, have you retain your yet you retain your sanity? That does mean you must be the you have a kind with right going Kaido Mario there. Wouldn't you agree, Kaido Mario? I would. Well such monstrous bloodlines have no place in the nobility, but they're quite useful in warriors, as Mitsunaka has demonstrated. You may raise your head, warrior of Ashigaya. I'll not reproach you for this transgression. Thank you, Lord Me. Now, why have you done it? You said you had a reason for this? Very well. Tell me what it is. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Now what do I do? <laughs> just I'd like to run into the minister to the left like this. Just tell him the truth. He's got to be a nice guy. He's in charge of... He's, like, in charge of stuff. They want to, like, put a mean guy in charge of stuff. In front of Lord Dalmont, too, no less. So what do I do? If I mess up here, all of our heads are all yoll for sure. <laughs> well, Sakata Kentucky. This will be a good challenge in its own right. Alright. Time to steal myself. Just gonna have to make him understand what's at stake. Kaido Maku. I know you're not a frequent visitor to the palace. Especially not at this early hour. I also heard from Kaoyoku that you share an audience with his own Miyoji. Why is that? Tell me why you have done this, Kaido Mayo. The Imperial Holy Grail War. Oh, he doesn't have a caster yet. Just tell him that. All those claims about the Holy Grail War bring Kyo a thousand years at peace. Oh no, he are a pack of lies. Okay, he's going straight to it. Oh, the Imperial Holy Grail War's true aims are pure malice. We believe it is all a villain scheme, and it will lead to a great uprising that threatens the peace of the entire city of Kyo. So please, Lord Minister of the Left, we beg you, please re reconsider going ahead with the Imperial and Holy Grail War. A villain scheme? But Lord Sama himself detailed the workings of this ritual in the letter he sent. <laughs> a villain scheme that will lead to the great uprising, hmm? All the things I thought you might say. Have you forgotten Kaido Mario, this contest for Seimei's own proposal? You can understand how an innocent youth of the mountains of the the east may not fully grasp the weight of the words of the greatest Omiyoji of our time hold. That is no excuse not to think before you speak. Remember, Kyo is already beset by constant threats to its peace. While it would be easily, easy to dismiss this Imperial Holy Grail War as something not to be trusted. If true, the thousand years of peace we stand again in exchange for the lives of a few foreign sorcerers is the most worthy prize. If it should prove to be false, then we shall be no worse off than we are now. Am I wrong, Kaido Mario? But, Lord Minister of the Left! I'm told that we only know about this you drove from. Ah, the heck with it. Come on, Minister, how do we even know the letter came from Lord Same, eh? <laughs> True. Well, we know it could just easily be a fake. You see how dang fishy all this is? Go on, Minister, this has got to be some kind of villain's plan. Lord Kentucky? Lord Kentucky? Stop, please! She's just like, oh my god, oh my head's gonna get cut off, please! <laughs> you mustn't speak to Lord Michinaga in such a coarse manner. Ah. Huh. Sorry about that, I mean, forgive me, Lord Minister of the Left. But I meant every word I said. Please, at least believe me about that. Hmm. You have certainly never been this insistent about anything before with Kaido Mario. I can also see you are by no means an experienced liar. Say, villain is behind this? Tell me more. Well, what do you know? You're a lot more reasonable than I thought, Mishinaga. Okie dokie! A man called Limbo. Oh? Positive, he's the one behind the Imperial Holy Grail War. Go on. Hmm. So you believe this to be a scheme of a villain from another world, do you? 
Fascinating. Indeed, we do know there are worlds beyond Japan and China. As evidenced by the different casters from distant lands we have already seen. It does change degrees, so that not every person from these other worlds would be kind and pure of heart. So I can see the logic behind your claims. However, everything about the letter we received, from the crest on its seal to the strokes in its writing, matches Seimei's other letters. Isn't that right, Dolmon? Yes, Lord Minister. I'm certain of it. Still don't trust that Dolmon guy, but... Donzo says it ain't him. I'll just have to trust that it ain't. Besides, accusing him of being limbo now won't get us anyway. Something wrong? No. Furthermore, you have no evidence to verify your claims. There's one thing to make claims about this limbo person being behind it all, but as of now, we have only your word. We cannot halt the Imperial Holy Grail War on your word alone. Dang it, should have seen that coming. Of course, that's how this was going to go when we had no plan for things to go like they have. Right now, the only proof we got is Horsey and the rest of the Caldeans word. I believe him. Or are you totally on board? Of course, Lord Michinaka isn't going to go... Yeah, actually, we're all lying to you, Kintoki. We're trying to destroy Japan. And thanks for helping us. <laughs> Especially when he doesn't have the same bad feeling about all this that I got. So now what do we do? However, I am a reasonable man. If you claim that the Imperial Holy Grail War is in fact a wicked scheme that must be stopped, then bring me proof. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Michinaga! Watch your tongue, Kaido Mayo. Now, as I was saying, either bring me proof that this is all some wicked scheme and Morisaki's just dying on the inside, or if all the masters remaining in the Imperial Holy Grail War were to refuse to compete, that would effectively halt the ritual as well. I would make you not get that would. Am I wrong? No, it would indeed be impossible to complete the ritual if the masters refuse to participate. As I thought, hmm, those are not the only ways. The Genji clan, the protectors of our city, were to determine that the Imperial Holy Grail War is indeed evil, I'd certainly be willing to believe them. There are few tasks more important than protecting the city where the Emperor resides. So if the clan charged with that task were to abandon this ritual in favor of protecting the city, I'd certainly have no grounds to object. How does that sound? You know, this guy looks so evil. This is the evilest man I've ever seen in my life, but he's actually kind of reasonable. And yeah, you really are a reasonable guy, Michinaka. Hmm? This aura. Oh, hey, Tsuna. What did I my note, Tsuna? Are they Tsuna? Never heard your discussion. My apologies. Never thought we would both ask to enter the palace, Kentucky, let alone do so at the same time. Unfortunately for him, Lord Minister of the Left, your proposal will not be possible. I, I am both a master of the Imperial Holy Grail War and a member of the Genji Clan, which means neither of your conditions can be met. For I am devoted to seeing the Imperial Holy Grail War through to completion. Ah, but is it Tsuna? The warrior of Genji entrusted with the prized Higekiri. Higekiri. Ha 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 ha! Seems as though you have your work cut out for you, Kentoki! Okay, he's a little evil. Tsuna! Kentucky, I told you I would have you show me your left hand the next time we met. Did you now? You are not in the Imperial Holy Palace right now, Query. What is it? Is that a title? Is that a name? It's not. It doesn't look Japanese, so. Have you look. I'll take a look right now and cut you down where you stand. Malver? <laughs> it was the Terrain Advantage lies with you now. So, you made me go back on my word. It seemed that. Gear, at least. You're the superior fighter. Oh, thanks. That's awful nice of you. <laughs> oh, that you get it all right? No! Oh, brave and powerful Genji warriors, please. Please, no further. This is the Imperial Palace. Simply cannot fight here. I beg of you, do stay in your blades. Dude, he's totally evil. Okay, steal diaries. So, I mean, Doman totally just impersonated Abe no Sami's letter, right? Like, he already impersonated him for like a whole singularity, you know, Shimosa. He can impersonate a letter, no, no sweat. Where 
Where are we now? Just outside? So there you we have it. We might not be any closer to finding Limbo, but at least now we know that he and Lord Domon are different people. The made sure the left even gave us the chance to stop the whole Imperial Holy Grail war. I'd say we got luckier than we could have hoped for. All we gotta do is either get the Genji clan or the other masters to wash their hands of it. So, what's our next move? My lord and Watanabe no Tsuna does pose a major threat, we put him aside for now. I believe our best option would be to find the three remaining master pairs of masters and servants. Unless it would be easier to convince the majority of the Genji clan to denounce the Imperial Holy Grail War instead? Nah, you're right. Bossy Echo ain't gonna be much help right now, so sorry about that. Strike by gathering information. Right on! Gotcha. And you don't even waste a second, do ya? I like it. <laughs> it must remind me of those Imperial officers. You used to you used you used to poking around unfamiliar places or something, Orsi? Yeah, pretty much. And I'll have to make sure I don't fall behind. And we won't get anywhere without information, so we already know about the steel guy though. Yeah that right. Okay then let's see what the hot gossip is. It is so much livelier now than it was at night. The difference is truly, well, night and day, but I'm tss. I suppose I should have expected as much. Truly, this is what it should be like all of the time. Pretty much. Come to think of it, you still still haven't seen what it's like during the day, huh? Guess that makes sense. So we were staying inside Kaoruko's house all day yesterday. Hey, it's Kentoki! Hello, child. I knew it was you! Hi, Ken Oh yeah, Kentoki's good with kids. Hi, Kentoki! Oh, but is it Kaido of Sagami? You've grown even bigger since I last saw you. Tell me, does the leader of the Genji know you're going around town with such a lovely lady? Here, Kentoki, you have some mochi. Don't worry, it's my treat! Oh, hey, this is great. We don't even have to go around looking for people to talk to. They're coming to us. You know, I tried mochi the other day. For the first time ever, I was with my sister. She went to an Asian market. I've never been to one before. But, crazy experience, by the way. Like, well, I, I just like the atmosphere of it, right? But, uh, well, do bigger cities have, like, um, I forget the name of yeah, in my city, there's like one store, basically. But it's huge, and like it's just cluttered, and there's just a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what it says, and it's like, oh, hey, that's food! <laughs> but one of them was mochi, and it was like three bucks. I'm like, yeah, I gotta try that. I don't even have to go around looking for people to talk to. They're coming out. One thing I was looking for that I couldn't find, the most delicious food in the world, pickled ginger. Couldn't find it, though. Heh <laughs> that'll save us some time. Hey, everyone! You heard about anything weird happening lately? Hmm? We're talking about nighttime or daytime? It better be day, what well, the monsters who come out at night. I haven't seen the Tango much lately. The only weird thing I can think of is that Oni, the one from Mount Owe. But her? She's no big deal. Ginger are around to handle exactly that kind of thing. We yeah, are more worried about the Su Suchigumo. Or they, they've even been throwing up around Side Road at night lately. At night? That's no surprise. I tell they show up around Suzaku Avenue, too. What? No, they don't. Come now, Kaido. Tell them I'm right. Nah, I'm not sure. Oh, no, you don't. Only sorts of Suchiguma and Genji warrior in store. How about are the big ones? It's the officer's job to handle the monsters that are wandering around Kyo at night, right? Haha, <laughs> thanks for saying so. I don't usually divide the work up that neat and tidy, but yeah, that's basically right. Ooh, ooh, Kentucky. What about the steel monster? Eh? Is that the giant monster that walks around at night? Steel monster. Great hulking beast that wanders the streets of Kyo at night. Towers over the average person. That's it! You know the Yanari shrine down the road from the palace? Oh, well, my big sister said she saw it slipping out from the grounds there. There are monsters out there that not even the great virtues of Yanari can do anything about. Yikes, that's scary. You mean the shrine where they keep the Yanari palanquin? I think I've heard that one, too. Cousin has a daughter who lives out near... Michi Bojo Alley. She said she had a big steel monster shop around midnight making weird creaking noises. Her having lips disturbs me, and I don't know why. Like, you know, all the other characters don't have lips. Hey, look at that. She just has like a line. Oh, I guess Kentucky has kinda has lips. So how long has the steel monster been showing up? Has it always been around or is this more of a recent thing? 
I'm not sure. I cared about it yesterday, maybe the day before. Sister said she saw it yesterday. Master? Better look into it. Yes, Master. Let's go check it out. Danzo, let Kaoruko know we'll be coming back late, will ya? Understood. Okay, final aerial. Think we're gonna run into him, or? I mean, that makes narrative sense. Okay, so Babbage, obviously. Is this not Say, though? Is this a saber? Let's bring... Let's bring Vlad. He got buffed. Wasn't the, um... If I remember right... Didn't the first one, like, you just have to break one of the health bars of the enemies and it stops? Or it's nighttime now. So far, there ain't been anything weird. It's been forever since I had a company at a stakeout. This is a stakeout. Hmm? Guess you're used to this sort of thing, huh, Kentucky? So you just have to focus one of them, I think. And as much as an actual officer, catching thieves and looking for people is usually their thing. Our job's to deal with the only, trying to take over kill, take out monsters like the great Tsuchi Gumo. So, in reality, the Genji clan just kind of hung, hung out all day and were like, hey, man, we're taking out Odi, ha ha ha. We also exercise ghosts that also show up in temples or noble houses, take care of any stragglers who crop up from the rebellion in Easter Japan. Things like that, basically. But every now and then, we get jobs that involve taking a page from the officer's book, like this. Jobs that involve laying low, heading out, and investigating the truth behind a rumor or a mystery. That's all a pain in the butt. There's so many people out in the city. Any place with a lot of people seems like it always has more than a share of trouble. Think you don't care much for crowded places? Eh, can't say I do, no. I mentioned I grew up on a mountain. There's Mount Ashigai, a way off the east in a place called Sagami, where there aren't many other people around. Only other things there were beasts, beasts, and more beasts. Also the occasional Oni. I never saw this kind of thing back up on the mountain. There weren't any kids running around laughing, or mothers cooking, or men working. Like I said, there weren't any other people up there at all. And then now that I live in the city, see that, that, that sort of thing all the time, I really come to love them. I'm not sure I'll ever actually feel at home in the city. I'm not big on crowds. I still love those people anyway. I mean, I guess I like the way the beasts up on the mountain went up, living their lives, doing whatever they felt like too. But even though it's real similar, and quite the same thing, is it? Hmm. Has he already killed Shuten Doji? Guess the best way I can put it is, they're different, but they're also not. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm back, Master. As you wish, I informed Lady Karuko to that we will be returning late this evening. Great. Thanks, Donzo. Also, on the way here, I ran a quick scan of the Yanari Shrine Grounds in the surrounding area. I discovered a small shrine over by the tall grass that leads directly to a natural cavern. Nice! That's really a um, oh, Golden! Right, Orsi? Golden! Hell yeah! <laughs> this is how his catchphrase started. There's an underground cave out here in Inari Shrine, huh? You're right, it does look like it naturally formed. I how far back it goes. It really ain't that deep since I'm not feeling much in the way of wind, but... Oh, what do you know? Usually pretty dense when it comes to these sorts of things, but even I can tell there's something unusual here. Indeed. Sensors are detecting the same thing. Yeah, same here, I just heard the ominous music playing, so I know something's up. This cavern may not be very deep, but it's located right on top of a ley line, rich in magical energy. We can use way more magical energy than usual, right? I don't know anything about magical energy. I can tell there's something ominous about this place. Perfect for a monster's nest, or an Omnioji's sacred fire. So does that mean this is a good place? Or a bad one? Lady Mashu was here. She put down a summoning circle. But never mind that now. The important thing is, this cave would be a tremendous asset to any participant in the Holy Grail War. It would be an invaluable source of magical energy for Master and Heroic Spirit alike. For the Imperial Holy Grail War, it would be a key strategic point for any caster. So that means... Heh. <laughs> Looks like we hit the jackpot on our first try. Something in here. Could be monsters or only or sushi go gumo. 
Heck, it could even be another visitor from another from a different world. Magical energy signals detected up ahead. Measuring energy levels now. Whatever they are, they're not servants. That, that's not bad. Come on! It's gotta be Babbage. Like, you know, that's his minion. Aren't those called, like, Helter Skelters? Uh-huh. So these things are the steel monsters those people were talking about. Helter Skelters! Interesting. These things really are made of solid steel. They may look like it, but they ain't sense of armor. They haven't heard a name, so they aren't masters. <laughs> Guess that means we've got ourselves some casters. No, they themselves are not casters. I suspect they're familiars or perhaps clones. Here they come! Okay. So I wonder if this means that Babbage isn't here. He's just, you know, kind of set up. Or, it could- what if it's a Vise Braun? Yo, a Vise Braun! You know, golems. But, this has got to be a steel enigma. Aw, oh, dang it, I should have brought AO. Is it- I mean, I could- it might be faster to just withdraw, honestly. Now we got Vlad, we're going through with it. This is going to do a lot of damage. He got a second MP interlude. Well, rank up. It might have been. I forget if it was an interlude. I think it was just a rank up this time. The first one was an interlude. But to my understanding, uh, Vlad's MP strength was lower than like the standard MP single target. Because like back in the day, I think especially for Medea and Vlad. Since their NPs are like kind of spammable, spammable, I guess. Vlad's not really, but Medea's definitely was, right? Like you could get it turn one, which back in the day was huge, without the kaleidoscope. Um, let's do this. I think this will. Yeah, wasn't for sure that one shot it, but this gets all three of them in one turn. So his MP damage is lower. Medea's, I think, still is. Because she's just kind of been forgotten, right? Like, has normal Medea showed up in the story yet? I'm, well, okay, she showed up in Salem. I guess that counts. But, of all the Fate Stay Night servants, I think she's the u least utilized. Unless you only count um, Artoria Saber as Saber, right? Because they do kind of avoid using her, but you know, all the other ones, you know, it's free reign. Okay, they'll go down this turn. This is this actually went pretty quick. That's good. So the master has to be say though, because the diary thing going on. But. Like, how is she a warrior? Is my thing. What does she even fight with in her animation? Like, how, how, why is she an archer? What does she throw? I forget what her animations are. It does. <laughs> Unless my say is swole theory is actually true. They stopped. That was weirdly easy. Those things illusions or something? Uh, I believe they're either familiars or clones, as I originally suspected. They're Shikigami, huh? Something like that. Scavenger may not lie right on the intersection between all the city's ley lines. Still abundant in dense magical energy. It would be a tremendous asset for a caster. It would also be the perfect nest for certain types of monsters. We already said that. We're the caster who discovered this city. City? This cave. Likely place these things here to ward off unwelcome creatures. Gotcha. Those things weren't nearly enough to take down a master. It makes a lot of sense if they were being used for pest control instead. Those are Helter Skelters. Yes. Oh yeah, you said that before too. What are those? I'm guessing they're Charles Babbage's familiars. Babbage? That's a foreign name if I've ever heard one. What's he like? Where's he from? Is he one of your allies from Caldea? 
Or is he a caster from a foreign land? Like I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure how to describe him. Are you thinking of him as a caster? However, even if he is the same heroic spirit we know, he'll be a completely different person now that he's been summoned to this time and place. Huh? <laughs> My apologies. Charles Babbage is indeed a caster. He's a heroic spirit who made a mark on humanity in the distant past. Well, during our current time period. I suppose it'll be the distant future. We do need to know his name and what he looks like at Caldea. Hmm. Okay. The genius mathematician who invented the difference engine. Not really for sure what that means. <laughs> difference engine? What's that? He's a heroic spirit who dreamed of a different world. It Babbage was like an early computer guy, right? Understandingly, the history of computers is complicated and hard. It made rocks think. But, um, I, I think that's what he did. Different world? The difference engine would later be developed further into the analytical engine. I'm told it was a landmark invention that enabled people to perform calculations well beyond human capability, which would turn that to great cultural developments. Lord Babbage hoped to use it to bring about a new chapter in human history. That dream never came to pass. Huh. Okay. <laughs> a cruel fate, twist of fate prevented Lord Babbage from completing the different century in his lifetime. When inspired by his ideas, humanity would go on to create devices of equal capability, which they then used to achieve in other incredible things. So I guess as a robot, Kato is like his biggest fan. Now, the Lord Babbage was materialized as a heroic spirit dreams of another historical timeline. Hypothetical world where he succeeded at completing the difference engine. Alternatively, maybe that Lord Babbage was able to see the pruning theoretical phenomenon. Oh, big words! <laughs> that's that's right is perfect, that expression. Alright, the pruning theoretical phenomenon, I remember now. I think you mentioned that when you guys were telling me your story. Let's see, I think the pruning theoretical phenomenon futures that could have happened if circumstances were different. Yeah, hey, he actually remembered. He's smart. I knew it. As long as human history remains human history, there will always be tomorrows that can never become today. Thus, it is the fate of humanity that all tomorrows which will never be part of the chronicle theoretical phenomenon will be pruned away. Is that true timelines? I've never heard that name before, I think. Gotcha. Uh, well, not really. Basically, you're saying this guy was inscribed in humanity for doing something he never actually managed to do. And now he gets summoned to time here, he's different from his own, while still dreaming his old dreams, right? It's one of the saddest things I've heard in a long time. Cut to black? Okay, end of chapter. I mean, I guess we're gonna fight him next time, and... Do you think we're gonna bring him to our side, or do you think we have to kill him? I don't know what kind of uh, story Hank Hero is going to be yet. Is this going to be a power of friendship or if everyone's going to make us kill each other? Okay, we're back to Morisaki's place then. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Um, This video might be spliced together with the second half, depending on how I feel at the time basically. So just uh, keep that in mind if the video doesn't end. <laughs> you got a whole other hour to go maybe. If not, see you guys next time. Bye.